Good morning, co-fans. I'm A, of course, and I'm here today with a very exciting one versus one featuring two very exciting players from Georgia playing as the United States of America. It's Dexan. And from Quebec, Canada, playing as those dastardly coastal reserves. It's the coastal battle group of the Wehrmacht. It's De Mer. The map is Twin Beaches with the brand new rendering settings and occlusion settings, and it looks ever so slightly better. Expect a lot of shit talking. These two guys are very, very well acquainted with one another. They're from Company of Heroes 1's vintage. They're from that community um, entering into Co3. And as a result, of course, that means they've adapted to Co3 better because Co3, in its design philosophy, is more similar to Co1. And that's why a lot of Company Heroes 2 um, kind of fanboys really don't get why AE in particular loves Company Heroes 3 so much. It's because I'm a Co1 fanboy at heart. So there you go. There's the secret. It's not the bomber jacket Relic gave me after all. Right, we've got our very first fighting nest uh, put down. This reminds me of uh, why Love Nest named himself Love Nest, one of the most famous Company Heroes players of all time. It's uh, because the Grenadiers in Co2, of course, famously said, uh, When are we getting out of this, love nest? Something like that. Right, Ket and Krad's been chilling out in the south for now. Um, got engineers from Dexen, as well as his scout units. Very rare you see engineers relatively quickly from the US. It's usually after they've built their first tank and it's damaged. Uh, but no, we've got a mine down on the plus 10 fuel, so watch out for that one. He is ignoring the plus 10 in the north. And we've got the... Basically, the Atlantic Wall is being made already. Rifles are pushing further up. We've got coastals coming down. They can 1v1 rifles, but they're going to want to be behind this heavy cover or this heavy cover. Let's make a little bit of use of the glorious tactical map in this game. See the cat and crad. Moving around, I call it glorious because it is. It's got the artistic benefits of the Company Heroes 1 tactical map, and now it's got all that quality of life from Co2. So, good time to get back into the game if you're a TAC map fan, IMO. But not so great if you, um, if you want the game to be perfectly balanced, because it's not perfectly balanced right now. Coastal Reserves IMO are the most powerful thing by uh, a long margin, mostly because these Italian dudes. Not only can they climb stairs, they're also pretty much 1v1ing most early game infantry. In fact, all early game infantry. If, they get, if they're behind heavy cover, you ain't got much chance. Right, so we, do, we don't have anything chosen for Dexem quite yet. He doesn't interesting... Oh, he does have advanced infantry in his loadout, so he has that as an option. And this is what you're going to want to do versus the Coastals. You're going to want to 2v1 them. Get up close and personal. Deny them. Oh, there's a mine to start you off. <laughs> to be honest, with backup, and they do have backup. They have the MG42. They're actually going to win this. Excellent play by Demare so far. Dexen has got to be wondering what he's going to have to do to fight against this. Crystal Reserves get within their nest. But that means the cutoff is available. Just going to keep an eye on the desktop audio on OBS because I wasn't sure about the mix. I'm not sure if the game's too loud or not. I'll have to wait for some fighting. Uh, I bet you can hear it. Probably not quite loud enough there. Last person I cast with was, was Orange Best and his mic's terrible. So I had to take the whole thing down a notch. Right, Engineers. And we just had another mine go off there. Engineers are able to force away the Kettencrad. Meanwhile, Coastals have gotten the drop. And the MG's pivoted north. Rifles are able to neutralize the cutoff, but not complete the cap. Very nice. Ket and Crad's going to go back to base. In tandem with the Pioneer, get some repairs. Good work by Demare up there. Captain ISG out. Let's up the desktop audio a little bit there, just to make it a bit louder. And of course, we're going 2 2 1 into Verbally Vindy. Lovely stuff. Engineers have had a good game so far. Another mine there. There was two mines here, it seems. 
There's blood all over the beach already. And the 2-2-1's now out. And that's going to mean that Dexon's going to have to go nades for these three rifles to get some sticky bombs. Preparation H, whatever it's called. Caniston duo. Something like that. All right, Coastal's pushing north now. Some heavy cover they can get behind there. Still no battle group for Dexen. Um, we can see that we've gone full right side. We now, of course, have the artillery officer available for the mayor. Oh, and if you've made it this far into my video, I'm restarting my uh, Patreon. Um, but it's going to be for show matches and random events like a 4v4 All-Stars game. Uh, grudge matches, Co-1, Co-2, Co-3, just basically using a war chest if you want to help me get a war chest to basically put on a higher caliber of entertainment because auto match is great and this is a good one because it's a grudge match. You don't often get spicy auto match games like this, trust me, I would cast them otherwise. Um, so yeah, I'm starting on my Patreon, full month of warning if you were already a member for the Master League. It is rebranded now, so you've got a month to cancel if you don't want to support, but I urge you to do so. All right, self at promotion aside, let's see if Dexend can push back onto the field. MG42 has been burnt alive, feeling very toasty, but does survive. Oh, Kettenkrad, one bullet away from disaster there. And there's no one on the retreat path, he should be fine. 2 2 1, and Coastal's all ready to soak up the damage. We're going to go for an M8 here from Dexen. Now, this is very reminiscent of US versus defensive doctrine in Company of Heroes 1, if you don't mind me saying so. An M8 always found use, even in those scenarios, because what you want to do with an M8, top secret source knowledge, is it's not actually meant to run into the enemy's face and get killed within the first five minutes of its existence. No, no, no. It's meant to help push the sides... You're meant to use the M8 to have an area of effect on the sides of the map and from behind shot blockers such as this. Uh, I wouldn't say that, to be honest. It's like this area is a good one to jump from behind. But in this case, no, there isn't any anti... Well, there is. There's the two centimetre flak coming out, which can actually deal some damage. But yeah, you're meant to keep your M8 alive. You're meant to acquire veterancy, and it's meant to add to your overall pressure. That you're able to exert. Surely you should know there's a mine there. Surely you should. Oh, come on, Dexen. Come on. You could have seen the Ketten crowd. And look at that. The veterancy's rolling in for the Ketten crowd now. Nice work there. As Dane would say. He's getting within the fightiness, but I'm not too sure about that because his health's still going to dissipate. And by the time he has to retreat, it's going to be. Mighty difficult to survive. So, yeah, there's the retreat. And I expect a few more of them to die. They may even get focus fired. Owie. Kapowie. Well, they are able to survive thanks to the 25% bonus on retreat. Thank you, Relic. All right, got more abilities unlocked. I think it's now designate defensive line. So it's going left side. Dex is still yet to choose his battle group of choice. Ah, speaking of which, here it is. It's special operations. And he's going for the pack howitzer. How oh, fascinating. Here he is. Wiesel mit howitzer. And there's Verbally Vindy. I tell you what, I can't see any counters for Herr Verbal. That's going to really hurt, I think. I think that's going to smart, as they said around here. Holy smokes. Let's go on a little bit of an adventure with the cat and crowd. Just trying out the new cinematic mode. You can still see the uh, the over the overlay of like the territory sectors and stuff, but it's just a bit more... I can actually cast like this, to be quite frank. It's not overly difficult to cast like this. There's Pack Howitzer. Getting my Michael Bay on. As there you go. You can see the Verbal Vin making its way down that central road. Oh, dear. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice mode, that is. I'm going to make more use of that. Obviously, most of my cast will be in standard position, but it's just nice to get a little bit of that. Uh, for me, it's 1440p, but you 1080p plebs on YouTube uh, get a little bit of those pixels on the screen. 
And here he comes, straight down the road. You're all fucked. That's my experience of Automatch right now. Survive if he lets you. And what, what can he offer that Verbalvin? Not much. I have to say, that is a missed opportunity from Demare. He could have rolled straight into base there. There was nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no bazooka squads even. Like, no even poor man's counters. There's literally nothing. Like, Demare, you were a killer in Co. 1 days. You would have, if this was Co. 1, I would expect you to be in there, running around, having fun. Maybe you're expecting the possibility of a Shafi, possibly. Shafi into AT grenade combo is possible. But at least, like, I don't know, drive a bit further in. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll watch this replay and tell me how stupid I am as the Kettenkrad, by the way, dies to a mine there. And maybe he'll tell me how wrong I am. Ah, they've still got the sound bug. Basically, uh, I sh I, yeah, I'll have to report that to them. Basically, the engine noises of tanks aren't showing in the fake fog of war. That is kind of still there, according to the computer. The audio thinks the fog of war is there, basically. So they need to fix that. I will tell them. On my super secret relic line. The MG goes down, but also the M8. Was it worth it? I'm not too sure about that. Let's go for a cinematic explosion time. Oh, dear. Well, that could be a thumbnail. Yeah, Demer is absolutely romping to a win here. Pack out is starting to fight back a little bit, though. We've also got a Marder out, just expecting Chaffees. Maybe... Deck sense existing within like the Schrodinger's Shaffy realm right now. As long as your opponent thinks there's a Shaffy or thinks you're gonna get one, you know, you're relatively safe, I guess. <laughs> don't know how that works. Has the weasel been dropping any weapons or doing anything? Can it distribute? I don't know what it's doing. It's doing anything. Any AT grenades possible? That's a not a nice place to be. 2 2 1, flak, and a. Uh, Verbal wind. But there we go. The M1 AT gun picks, uh, kicks in. Getting a nice shot there. Time I'm recording this, by the way, if you don't know why I said good morning to you. It's 9.40 in the morning. Dexen and Demare played this, I think, sometime on Friday. And I like I liked the fact that a lot of people that give me the replays these days... Oh, there's a bunker for you. That's a command bunker, I want to say? I don't fully understand the bunkers. I haven't played enough with them. Every time I've gone for this doctrine, I have played about probably 12 times with this doctrine. I tried building SimCity once, failed, and then I've just spammed the artillery officer ability and had fun with the rest of it. Not a bad place to put one, but then the AT gun was able to get around the side. It was good for surviving the pack out. So you'll notice the pack out hits the roof slate most of the time. Captain looking low, mine detonates there. I tell you what, the mining from Dexon has been fantastic this game. Really good stuff. Bunker now down. The officer's having some fun. <laughs> Willing his uh, comrades into battle in the north. Scouts pushing up. Got another mine there. US mine, I presume. I think so. I need to learn what mines the mines look like now, I guess. Pretty sure the US mines are the most standard looking. MG's stayed unoccupied for a long time. Righty ho then. Rifles pushing in. Scouts watching on. Verbal Vin from a high. Says hello. And what do we have happening in base? Anything major coming out quite yet? Yeah, we got the Panzer um, Command constructed. Any signs of a tank depot in the American base? Not quite yet, no. Another AT gun is the call. So, seems to me he thinks AT guns and pack howitzers are going to allow him to struggle his way back into battle. Oh, you can see the opponent there.
officer gets a high vantage point as well. I think he's... What's he done there? What we have to do here is go on Dumer's position to see all of his abilities. Fully get an understanding of everything he's utilising. See he's gone for bull, Bullock. Bullwalk. Bullock. Something like that. Oh, Scout's going to die to the 2-2-1. There we go. It's been live from the first minute of the game. It dies in the 16th minute. Mine detonates on the way back. 2-2-1 lucky there. If any more damage had been occurred before he hit the mine, that would have been completely totaled. Written off. MG42 has now been recruited for Demare. I wonder where Dexon's going with this next. They have been lying in wait in the waiting. north. It's been a very struggly game, very attritional so far. I was told that this game is on the insanity scale, though, so I'm expecting it to boil over and become rather spicy in the future. It's not been a bad game, only stretch of the imagination. There's the officer with a nice area of effect on both AT guns. Owie! Get out of there. Come on, Dexen. Pick up that AT gun. Oh, oh, oh so close. Oh, rifles versus the Jaegers. And the Verbal Vins pushing in from the, the north. I was wor wondered why it was like a crouching tiger up there. Well, it's become a hidden dragon now. Yeah, you don't want to fight that. These AT guns, one of them's surely got to go back to base. Shame he can't find any use for this reason. Oh, Verbalvin has gone in this time. Demers found his moment. Look at that Vet 3 engineer. So many mines have been laid. M8's coming to fight the battle. But he knows that those M1 AT guns were weakened, so he spied an opportunity there. Why not? Why not indeed? Finish the fight. We'll run back to base. I think they'll have to run back to base. Coastal's laying mines. I wonder if he's got that cheap mine ability yet. Is it... Which one is it? It's the Italian... Uh, no, sorry, it's the Atlantic Wall, isn't it? Because you're like, I don't know. So cheap mines. What a grenade that was. MG completely wasted there. Weasel pushes up to cap. Who's going to get it? It is the Coastals, and they will return back to base with that. Yeah, somebody told me like 70 munitions, 90 munitions, somewhere in that range. Ooh, 2 2 1 trying to harass the Weasel, but Weasel's bigger brother is coming round the corner. And then the Panzer IV, the daddy of the situation, makes his presence felt. Oh dear, oh dear. Mine detonates there. That one the Coastals just finished off. And all the while, by the way, this fighting position, this barbed wire has kept this fuel in Quebecois hands for the entirety of this game so far. And phosphorus bullets used there on the captain. Yeah, rapid fire artillery there used. Of the captain mortar. Right then, let's see if we can quickly go to the players and check out which one of Yeah, so that's Coastal Wall, so decrease mine price by 35%. We've now got... Yeah, that's the original Panzer IV. That could be much worse. Just pop bars as well, and he's going to die. There you go. AT wings pushed up, and they're, they found the mod with a flare... Nice work there, but will they get the kill? Yes, they will. Flare, AT gun combo. That's hype there from Dexon. Nice work. It's all this infantry helping each other out. What is this? It's healing, better at killing, better at surviving. Many icons were shown this day. The Coastals are going for a flank here. I don't know what they're thinking. Well, about flanking, they've actually flanked the pack howitzer, 
and they may get the kill here. Meanwhile, we've got the Panzerfall going into base. We've got the Verbally Vindy and the 221 in the center. With Coastals on the rifles, that's not looking too good for Dexon. Let's check on that Panzerfall. What's he up to? Meanwhile, in the south, I don't know what happened there. Yep, just Panzerfall wrecking face. That guy ran backwards and forwards one too many times. They're losing all realism in a fleeting moment. Panzerfall gets away. At M1s have had to rotate back to base. I don't know how the victory point situation has been kept alive. I imagine that uh, Dex has been able to get this one for a majority of the time in order to, you know, stay relevant. It's three, four, eight. He's got more than um, Demer. Oh, there's those AT guns. Light up the sky with that new projectile. Looks so much better than the old tracer style, doesn't it? Engineers. Forcing the pioneers away there, but they themselves are forced back. We now have the newly improved Schertzen on the side of the tank, giving. I think, is it like a health boost now instead of just an armor boost? I remember something in the patch notes. Righty then. Pushing in, but it's a preemptive artillery cast there by the, the wizard of the battlefield. He's a nasty bastard, isn't he? Those binoculars. He sees you, you're dead. With his magic eyes. Bunker found. Bunker destroyed by the AT gun combo. We're going to get veterancy on these AT guns. We can rapid fire tank killers soon. You ought to be ultimate veterancy for tank. I don't know. Anti tank guns. An extra man. I think that would probably be more, um, more beneficial, to be honest. Just keep them on the battlefield that bit longer. Right, we've now got SSF commandos available for Dexen. We've also got the Viz, the Wisbank, if he wants it. I was in German pronunciation mode, mode there, I know they said Wisbank. Oh, the Americans have a Wisbank here. Yeah. Does the M8 look cool now? I think it does. When the game first launched, the M8 was one of the most toyish looking units. And you could argue it looks borderline cool now. I would say cool. Let's stay it. Oh, oh, Panzer IV in trouble. One AT gun shot from disaster there. You know who could finish it off if he got round the back? The M8. But he's not going to be able to get there. That's a long stretch. No damaged engines. So he'll be absolutely fine. Nothing worse than... Ooh, that was a big one. There's nothing worse than um, getting so much health off your enemy's tank. And it not having a damaged engine, so it's just able... All that work is for nothing, because it'll be able to get back to base. A very annoying sensation. Artillery officer nearly 1v3. Everything in there. Jaeger's pushing in on the M8, but he gets a shot from afar. Panzer IV. Oh, that's the verbal VIN, sorry. Now Veteran C2. Operating from within the designated defense line. It's a nice trifecta of um, situations. And we're having a mortar building from the infantry company of Demer. Interesting choice. And the Vizbang's out. Yeah, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I haven't seen this in this patch yet. This is going to be awesome. Whiz, bang, whiz, bang, whiz, bang. Now, take the overrun. Ho, ho, ho. He means business. And yes, I will be doing a lot of cinematic uh, camera work for the Wizbank. You know it. My, my camera angle of choice is from behind the Wizbank. Oh, yeah, here we go. Fire. Well, he'll want, he'll want vision first. He's not a noob. He's not a noob. Let him get vision, and then he's gonna. I'm going to get a camera angle from behind it. Oh, that'll be nice. What's happening up here? He's in the... Uh, Captain Mortar on him. Oh, he's going. He's going. Let's go. Whiz bang. Here we go. We have lost control of the victory point. Nope. Nope. You're a tease. You're a tease, bang. Oh, he's going again. He's going again. Shh. Don't scare him. It's not as cool as you think, is it, really? 
That's pretty tasty. That's pretty tasty. Let's see what damage was done. And the two centimeter flak is down. Meanwhile, in the north, um, rifles thought they'd won that engagement, but they were beaten back. Two centimeter flak should be fine. We've got the uh, 221 basically giving free um, pre warning of any infantry troop movements in the vicinity. Nice. I'll take that. That'll probably go into a quadrant thumbnail. I'm chewing quadrant thumbnails these days. Right then, come on. Shrek will get another shot there, but it hits that piece of sand in particular. What has this mortar been up to? It's not done much yet. We have another... Sorry, a rebuilt mortar. It's been a good game, though. I like the arduous kind of attritional nature of this particular game. I was expecting crazy tank warfare, but with US versus uh, Wehrmacht as they are, I can't always expect that. Another command bunker or healing bunker put up there. Three rifles still for Dexen. He hasn't got that much veterancy on them, it must be noted. Meanwhile, the Coastals, he's got only got two Demare has. Here comes that gruesome twosome. Panzer IV, Verbal Vin combo and Mortar. Those rifles are out of there. Can you blame him? Meanwhile, in the north, I don't know why he's put the Marder up there, but he has. Losing all the plus 16 munitions into Yankee hands at the moment. And the victory points are still really even. 286, 277 right now. This game has legs and it knows how to use them. I'm really starting to believe that this will become one of those incredible scintillating finale style of games. More to his full stop. Back in base, rifles are getting healing. We're finally, finally getting Tank Depot. These AT guns have carried Dexon to this point, it must be said. Very KOTU style. Pack it's a blapping. Veterancy 2, very low on health. Could do with uh, stop doing this dance. And, oh my god. And um, going back to base to get some healing, IMO. There's the Vizbang again. Lovely stuff. Back in the USSR. You don't know how lucky you are. And there's a... I tell you what, his tank armor is pulverizing right now. Demare, I'm going to have to say my biggest criticism of him in this game is the kind of exertion with the amount of power he has on the field has not been quite enough for my tastes. If you think of... Oh, he's got a Brumbear as well. Is he just trolling? Is he just having fun? He's got so much potential for aggression. Look at this. Brumbear. Marder. Panzerfall. Verbalvin. And the 221, yo! He's got like. He's got as many tanks as he's got infantry slash support weapons, basically. Hellcats coming out for Dexon. Not a bad shout. 71 Popcat versus Demare on 83. Everything's being scanned right now. Fair enough. Just like it is a wall, isn't it? If you see that, he's just basically got all of his things in a... Well, I used to call a helping hand style line. When helping hands used to play competitively, uh, he'd just have this like line of units interlocking across the map. Jove was kind of similar in that respect. It's just like everything connected to one another. Right, there we go. It's getting a little bit more active now. He's below 250 points, so needs to be a bit careful. And he's got a lot more kills than 110. And here we go, he is pushing in, but the Whizbang has it countered. Jaegers go the other way around. Everything evades the Whizbang's rockets there. Jaeger's able to put a little bit more exertion. Maybe he'll be able to get a... No, this grenade to force him off. 
And there's not much left of that house. Run there, pushed in. I don't think he got much done there. Panzer four in the centre. He should have better effect on target. He's temporarily shocked, however. And we got the verbal Vin Vet two going into base. But oh, there's two Hellcats waiting for him. Surely that's a flank. He's going to go all the way around this rock, and the verbal Vin will be rather dead. Maybe he should just 180 right now. I don't know. There you go, AT guns. And the Hellcats are going straight in for the Brumbear. They're ignoring the threat at base. They're ignoring it. And they're going straight in. They get the kill on the Brumbear. Well, the AT guns do most of the work. And now they've got the Panzer IV in their sights. Side hit. What a strange decision that was. But it's reaping dividends right now for Dexon. How can we question him? Good AT gun shot threading the eye of the needle. And then he's going to come back to clear up Morda. Is using that Co-1 ability. Well, I can't remember. It's aim down sight. That's dead as well now. Everything's dying. Oh, no. Now the Verbal Vin. That was a checkmate if I've ever seen one. Build two Hell Hellcats. Keep them to one side. And then come in for the finishing blow. Tell you what, US do a lot of that in Company Heroes 3. People do it with their mates in uh, everything from 1v1 to 4v4. They like save up a couple of their mates and then push in with them. And in this case, he used the Hellcats in a battle group, and now he's just absolutely wrecking face. Whizbang as well. They're starting to ratchet up the kills. Nearly killed the bunker there, but he's a little bit wary of I don't know what. He could keep up the pressure now. Oh, look at that. He's jettisoned. He's jettisoned the rockets. You'll find them somewhere behind him. He's now turned the Whizbang into a Sherman just for maximum obliteration. We're using that defensive artillery strike. Designated artillery overwatch just to keep himself in the game is Demare. But he's gone from many tanks to no tanks. And he's probably saying no thanks if he wants to continue this game. Tapping out sometime soon. He doesn't have much left. We've gone from 80 pop cap against Demez 49. Very quick time there. Hellcat's exposing himself rather a lot there. Don't know why he's doing that. A bit too aggressive. Possibly. Are there any Jaegers in the vicinity? Not anymore. The one squad is relatively out of the picture. Bunker down. Marder. I'm going to have to remember the name of that ability. It is Sight Main Gun. That's it. Oh, he died. Did he hit a mine? Or was that some kind of... Yeah, he must have done, I guess. No! That's the anti-tank uh, grenades that they have. The little Italian anti-tank grenades. What are they called again? They are called... Oto Mods. OTO Mod 42s. They're basically anti-tank Molotovs, basically. From what I understand. AE rescuing your uh, trust in his... Moderate knowledge of coming here as three, though. I always skirt the lines between being a complete noob and uh, knowing a lot. And often somewhere in between those two points. Righty ho. I'm loving this. Uh, I wonder what it's called now. It's just called a Sherman now. No, it's still called a Sherman Whiz Bang, despite the lack of Whiz or Bang. Mostly just Bang, actually. And, yeah, that Marder didn't stand much chance. Ooh, look how much it slows the engine there. Shrek could finish it off. What a combo that is. The, o the OTOs. I don't know what to call them. The anti-tank Molotovs doing their work. The Shrek combo coming in clutch. Could be finished off. He does not want to lose his Vet3 Jaeger. Does not want to do it. Oh, no. This could be game. If he loses this, I tell you what, I don't see much for him. How's he still alive? He's got to survive. He's simply got to survive. But here comes a Hellcat as well. There's a Panzer IV in base. And he runs the gauntlet and gets out of there. I tell you what, he just tried to attack ground past the Panzer IV to finish the squad off. But he wasn't able to do so. So little health on this guy. I think he had ridiculously low levels of health. Oh, it's been healed now. I should have checked it out earlier. It wasn't fast enough. Oh, tell you what, this could die now. He's in the artillery overwatch. 
That is all right. Safe. Territory lost. We have an exploding tank on our hands. Wait, the victory points. Oh shit! Should we do it that way? Oh, I definitely don't want to listen to that. I think the victory points are the wrong way around, possibly. I think that the victory points are the wrong way around. Interesting. Oh, Panzer IV's down. This has got to be game. Hellcat could die, possibly. Yotios and Shrek combo. He knows he's dead. He's not even bothering. Look at the immediate acceleration. There's no ramp up. He just decided to yeet his tank out of there. Yeah, they've got, that's a bug, clearly, in my opinion. There's no way that acceleration's real. No way, surely. See, it just went from 0 to 100 immediately. Yep. It's like watching uh, a 95-year-old man try Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for the first time here with the mayor. It's not going to go well. But you're watching it out of respect. And he's against Brock Lesnar. <laughs> We're not, he's not, but uh, that's what the American army's looking like now. And this Hellcat somehow survived. Bloody hell. So low health on that bad boy. Sherman Bulldozer in the build, is that? It's pretty bulldozer -y. Is that the icon for a bulldozer? I think it is. This new Jaeger's got a runner gauntlet of his own. No, but he's not vet three. And he's dead. Another Panzer IV out. Victory points somehow. Let me just check that. The Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, he's calling GG. Demare was the blue victory point count, by the way. Um, confusingly. But, um, yeah, he's calling it a day, seems. What did he just say? Calling it a, a day, I feel. Well, nice strategy from Dexon. I feel the double AT guns, I think that's the only way to survive, really, against Axis right now. Um, but he was able to pivot from the double AT guns into a pretty interesting and novel strategy that worked well for him. Basically, indirect fire. Uh, pack howitzer into Whizbang. Um, but it wasn't necessarily that that one in the game. I just think it was the AT gun usage in particular. A um, little bit of um, timidness at times from Demer. I think he could have been more bold when he had the advantage. But unfortunately for him, he chose to be bold a bit too late. And by that point, the two Hellcats were secretly being a mask. Hmm? What's this? It's not over? Oh, we've got pockets of fighting all over the place. Jaegers pushes in. Demer leaves. He just wanted a moral victory, it would seem. Let's go over to the stats and um, see what we've got going on there. Um, looks like many people died. Efficiency, resource efficiency, Dex and was, you can tell he was because he had to hold on um, at times, so his resource efficiency should be slightly better, I would imagine. He was a more skinny, more lean operation in order to stay in the game. Points held's always my favourite graph because I don't trust any of the others coming here, it teaches me that. And you can see just how even it was for the majority of that game, um, which basically says GG. Well, no, my f it would be it's more of a GG if the lines like go like up and down. Usually, this means it was a struggle of a game if it was like ten. But if you get lines like this, but then it keeps switching between the players, that's like when you've had an epic comeback game, basically. Uh, resource flow can't really see much from that. Units. Um, we can see the efficiency factors of the units. Engineers had the best efficiency factor for Dexen. Uh, that makes a lot of sense because, of course, those mines were awesome. 
And that's awesome that we actually get to see that in Company of Heroes because it was always the idea that engineers slash pioneers were one of the most powerful units on the game because of their mind laying, especially in 1v1. And now you're finally seeing it, so it's pretty cool. Um, let's see there. Looks like Jaegers. Yep, Jaegers were absolutely clutch. That Vet3 Jaeger I identified as being uh, the most powerful unit in Demare's army. And we've got Verbal Vind, of course, clutch and crutch unit of the Wehrmacht. Let's go back to the vehicles for Dexen. Don't think we gave them enough. Um, it should be there. Well, actually, it says the M8 was one of the major factors of why he stayed in the game. He was able to um, elicit 20 infantry kills, which isn't amazing. 23 on the Wizbang in total. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to add to my war chest, I'm currently in the midst of building, uh, rebuilding my Patreon account again. So it's going to look something like this. Um, AE Co Productions with AE Co being the URL. And I'm just rewriting all of this now. Welcome to a war chest. And I will be using this money to pay for cash games and really creative challenges and stuff. I fancy doing like more, something... Like, that keeps me interested and hopefully keeps you guys interested as well. Away from tournaments, it's going to be like, I'm hosting a 4v4 challenge. The winning team will get $100. We're going to do this on this weekend. And it's going to be these rules, something we've never tried before. It's going to be fresh and innovative, hopefully. So if you want to be a patron, please uh, become so. Uh, ah, and interestingly here, you'll see that I'm already setting up my very first uh, cash game. Um... It's going to be Zulu versus Orange Pest, and we get to choose the map pool now. So, um, let's do that. Um, I think we should just play all five games in the pool, and we shouldn't wait until... We shouldn't, like, reverse the factions on this one, because it is a cash game. Maybe we should just do all five games. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to stop recording now, um... Yeah, it doesn't matter about the time. 42 minutes is fine. Anybody could have won. It was a bit of a crazy game at the end. Um, hope you have a great weekend. And be on the lookout for this Orange Pest versus Zulu cash game, which should be launching on Sunday. And again, my new Patreon account. Thank you for watching.